Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about electron configurations uh, when we're dealing with ions. So to do that we need to do a little bit of a review of what an ion is first to make sure that we're all on the same page with that. So when we define the word ion, remember an ion is a charged particle. Okay, Basically it's an atom with electrons either gained or lost. Okay, so if an, if an atom gains electrons or loses electrons, it becomes an ion or becomes a charged particle. So we can be two things. We can be a positive ion which we call a cation or we can be a negative ion which we call an anion. Okay, so if we're a positive ion that means we have changed electrons to make it more positive. Remember, electrons are negatively charged. So if we're going to become positive, we must have lost negative charge. So in this case, we lost electrons, which means an anion, we gain electrons. Okay? Think of electrons as debt. Okay? If you lose debt, your bank account becomes more positive. If you gain debt, your bank account becomes more negative, which you'll find out real fast in college, okay? So, these are what ions are. Now, because we have lost or gained electrons, that's going to change the electron configuration because we have different number of electrons to deal with now, okay? So, the way that we deal with these ions is we actually take a look at uh, this idea of what do we do with the electrons and how do we take them away, okay? I wish it was as simple as saying reverse your order of filling, but it's not. Okay, we'll say that again. It's not a reverse order of filling. So when we're dealing with positive ions and how they work, we're going to use titanium as our example here to work our way down. So here's your rules. You remove from the highest energy level first. What that means is that you take electrons away from the seventh energy level before you touch any in the six. Six before five, five before four, three, two, one, exactly, and down the line. If you have more than one orbital where you have electrons, let's say in the six energy level, let's say you have both 6s and 6p, then the question drops down to here. So you take it from the highest orbital. So you take things from d before p and then s, okay? Again, you have to be in the same energy level first. So let's take a look at titanium. So here's titanium neutral, Ti, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d2. Okay. So that's titanium being neutral. When titanium is a 1 plus charge, okay, that means you've taken one electron away. So if we look, we have options here. We can take an electron from the 1s, the 2s, the 2p, the 3s, the 3p, the 4s, or the 3d. Okay. Now 3d was the last place we put them, but remember that's not how we reverse it. Okay. So we go to our rule, the highest energy level first. So let's find the highest energy level. Well, we have ones, we have twos, we have threes here, another three over here, okay? This doesn't mean the most energy, it's the highest level, okay? The highest level is the fourth energy level, which is right here, this 4s2, okay? So because it's a 4s2, that's the four, we're going to take the electron from there. So notice how when I rewrote this, we have a 4s1 now, and then a 3d2. So the 3d2 we left alone, we took the one electron out of the 4s. If titanium was a 2+, plus, we would repeat that pattern. So again, we've taken one electron out of here. We still need to take one more electron away now. And the 4 is still higher than the 3, so that 4s is completely gone. So we don't even write it anymore. We don't, we don't write 4s 0. We just completely remove it because that orbital doesn't exist anymore. So notice how now there is no fourth energy level. Okay? If you want to continue to ionize titanium, and let's say it had to become a 3+, plus or a 4+, plus, now we have the question of where do we take it from? Because we're all on the third energy level, right? So we have a 3s, a 3p, and a 3d. So since they're all threes, I have to choose between this, this, or this location to take my additional electrons from. Okay? That's when it drops down to this rule, where we go dps. So because I have 3d stuff, I'm going to take electrons from here before I take from 3p or 3s. So I'll take away from my 3d becomes a 3d1 when I 3 plus it, and then if I take another electron away, I end up being down where my 3d is completely gone, and I end up with just 3p6. 
okay? When you positively ionize things, you will do so to a point at most, at most, you'll end at a 3P6 or a noble gas configuration. Um, you'll never take electrons away from a 3P6 to ionize, okay? Um, but just follow your patterns, and that's, and that's how it's going to work. All right. Now, uh, here's some example problems that you can do. Uh, notice how it's positive, 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 positive. But there are a couple negatives, like nitrogen 3 minus and chlorine 1 minus. So we should talk about how negatives work. In reality, negatives are really easy. Okay, so if you have a negative ion, you just continue your pattern. There is no change. There's nothing fancy here. Just take the extra electrons you have and build them. Okay, so let's do nitrogen together on the board. So if I have nitrogen, nitrogen normally has seven electrons in it, but nitrogen with a three minus charge has three extra electrons because we gain those electrons. So I had seven plus three more. So really, I have 10 electrons to work with for nitrogen now. So all I'm going to do is fill it the same way I would anything with 10 electrons. Okay. So if, again, I go to my periodic table, here's nitrogen. It's got 7, but it's going to fill the same way neon would fill at 10 electrons. So I'm basically going to do the configuration for neon instead Okay, for 10 electrons. So I'm going to start off with 1, S2, 2, S2, 2P, 6, for 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 6 for 10 electrons in there, okay? So negative ions are actually really easy. Now, another hint or tr trick, negative ions almost always will end in a P6 because they almost always ionize to become like a noble gas, okay? All right, guys, there's some practice for you to do here. At this point, you can also do practice on the worksheet that we have for this unit, uh, and the answer key is also posted for you guys there. All right, uh, that takes care of pretty much everything we've done in this unit. So this is the last segment. Uh, thank you for your time.